Welcome to my video and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you a method that I've developed that addresses a problem that many brewers face, that being the effect of oxygen on finished beer. Oxygen exposure can shorten the shelf life of beer, it can eliminate hop character, and it can lead to off flavors that we want to avoid. Now this is most often faced during the packaging phase of brewing, and I'm specifically targeting kegging in this video. So when we package a beer in a keg, we're stuck with the problem that an empty keg is filled with air. And air, of course, is 20% oxygen. So ideally, we want to eliminate this oxygen before putting beer into the keg in order to avoid some of those oxygen pickup effects. Of course, brewers have already developed some ways of addressing this issue. In one of the more common ones, you pre-fill the keg with water or sanitizer, and then using carbon dioxide from your kegging system, you displace that water thus replacing it with carbon dioxide. A simpler method that many brewers use is to simply hook up their carbon dioxide regulator to their keg and then blast in some carbon dioxide. A third approach that brewers use is to transfer the beer to the keg with the attendant oxygen pickup that will occur, but they then add some sugar to the beer in order to induce a secondary fermentation, which will both carbonate the beer and eliminate that residual oxygen. So you might be wondering with all these different solutions, what problem it is that I'm trying to overcome. The issue with the first two methods is that both of them cost you money. The carbon dioxide that you use in your kegging system, of course, is purchased. And so anytime you purge kegs with it, you're literally blowing money out of the tank. The second method is even worse because not only is it costing you money, but it's imperfect and you don't get rid of all of that oxygen. Now, the third method, of course, is inexpensive. However, you do end up with a large yeast cake at the bottom of the keg. And because of that, you now have to deal with that cake more carefully in order to avoid drawing that sediment into your beer. So the concept behind my so-called invention is hardly new. People have been doing this in various forms for many years. The idea simply being that you capture the carbon dioxide produced as a natural part of the fermentation process and you direct it into the keg. In this way, you purge your keg with carbon dioxide that is otherwise a waste product of fermentation. Now, you might be wondering how well this can actually work, but keep in mind that beer produces huge volumes of carbon dioxide as it ferments. For example, a 20 liter batch of beer with a starting gravity of just 1050 will produce 20 times the volume of carbon dioxide as there is wort. That's 400 liters or 100 gallons of CO2 for a single 20 liter or five gallon batch of beer. So of course, lots of people have tried to capture carbon dioxide in the past with varying levels of success. I've tried multiple times myself, but it's not a trivial task. Getting most of that carbon dioxide into the keg in a way which doesn't lead to a pressurized system that could rupture your glass carboy, or in a way which doesn't have air leaking in is actually quite difficult but I think I've found a solution in the form of 3D printing. Basically, we can use our 3D printer to make customized couplings that allow us to very efficiently and effectively, in an airtight fashion that's going to be resistant to overpressurization, connect a fermenter to our keg. So the design is fairly straightforward and only involves two 3D printed parts, which are shown in purple as well as with the boxes. The first of these is a customized lid that fits onto any wide mouth mason jar and is used as a combination blow off collection port as well as sort of a gas separation unit. The second part is a simple adapter that allows for an airlock to be attached to the gas in port of our keg. The operation of this system is fairly straightforward. We need a fermenter which we can attach some tubing to either by using a bung or some other connector. The gas as well as some of the blow off produced by the fermentation will be collected by this and directed into a mason jar which is capped with our special 3D printed lid. This allows for the blow off as well as the carbon dioxide to be passed into the jar and then through a second port in the lid the carbon dioxide can escape and is then directed to the liquid out port of my keg. The air that's being displaced then escapes through the airlock and the airlock of course prevents air from going back into the keg. So the question of course is how well will this actually work? Now in theory you can label a denser gas like carbon dioxide underneath air which would then displace the 20% oxygen air out of the keg replacing it entirely with pure carbon dioxide. 
Of course, this is unlikely to occur because it requires very special equipment and very special technique to actually achieve that kind of layering. The worst case scenario though, is that we get perfectly even mixing of the carbon dioxide from our fermentation with the air in our keg. But even in this case, the situation is not all that bad. Keep in mind that we are passing through about 20 volumes of carbon dioxide, which of course will dilute out the air to about 5% its initial concentration. Now oxygen is only 20% of that 5% meaning that only around 1% of the total residual gas will be oxygen in the worst case scenario. And of course, in reality, we're gonna end up somewhere between these two. There will be some layering effects, uh, which will lead to a displacement of the air, but there will also be intermixing and diffusion between the carbon dioxide and the air. And we should end up with below 1% oxygen in our keg. So here's an example of the actual setup. I'm fermenting a stout. I've got brew belts on it because my basement's rather cold. And the gas being produced by this ferment is being collected by a bung into which I've inserted a hose barb that I've connected my tubing to. I also have a clamp on this to ensure a tight seal. This allows the gas to pass up and into the uh, mason jar, which of course has the 3D printed lid on it. The CO2 will be separated in this jar and passed to the liquid out port of my keg therefore filling the keg with carbon dioxide from the bottom up and then attached to the gas import, I have the airlock. The first step in 3D printing is to slice the model before you send it to the printer. Here I'm using Prusa's slicer and if you're using this slicer, make sure you activate bridge detection because we are going to need to use supports to print a couple of these parts. Next, import the parts into the slicer, select the two hose barbs and add supports to them only add supports to the build plate because if you have internal supports, they'll plug these nozzles. Next, slice the model, export the G-code and start printing. Once the print is done, free the parts from the build plate, remove all the support material and you're now ready to begin assembly. To assemble, take the gas out port, which is the small hose barb, and force it through one of the square openings in the lid such that the barb is pointing outside of the lid. If necessary, you can glue this with contact adhesive, but I recommend avoiding it because this small nozzle is prone to breaking, and if it can be sealed without glue, you can replace it in the future without having to reprint the whole lid. Then push the larger barb through so that it extends through both sides and glue it into place. To complete assembly, attach 3 8 inch tubing to the larger barb, a long piece that will go to your bung or other connector to your fermenter, and a shorter piece that will extend two thirds of the way down to the bottom of the jar. To the smaller port, attach 7 16 liquid line, and on the other end of that, attach your liquid out connector. This will complete the main body of the device. To assemble the airlock component, simply take the angled barb adapter and some 3 8 inch tubing and use it to connect your gas in port to the barb and your barb to a bubbler. If you lack a hose barb, the 10 millimeter hose barb by Hamano is perfect for 3 8 inch tubing, printed at 100% infill vertically, making sure to use a brim to stabilize it. For the carboy stopper clamp, Use the Walrus's design, also available on Thingiverse. Simply import it, flip it in the correct orientation, and slice it with 100% infill. These designs are not my own, but links to them are included in the video description. Before use, clean all of the connections and all of the tubing with some sort of a sanitizer, hook it up to your system, and begin purging your keg. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it interesting. The link both to my design as well as to the hose barb and the carboy clamp that I used in this video can all be found in the video description. This has been Sui Generis Brewing and I hope to see you on my next video.